They do sell St. Louis cut ribs, but for some reason they're more expensive. This is like the cheaper option out of Baby Backs, St. Louis, and you get more rib. They render out really nicely with the heat that we put on them. What we like to do is trim it off and then kind of take that meat off the top so we can use it in our sausage. We like to start on the bottom. I'm gonna do several of these so that way you guys can see it because it's, it's really not that hard. But what we like to do is we just go in and trim that breastbone off. The ribs usually always have like this little skirt in the back and we like to take that off mostly because uh, we like a nice even coat of rub. Last piece off the end just because there's no bone there. This is going to burn anyways. So we'll take that little piece off there. Salt first and then we would pepper it. So we do the bottom first because I learned a long time ago that the top is usually the presentation part and uh, we want it to look nice and even. We don't want any that, you know, pepper, that seasoning, anything that we put on here to kind of fall off. These ribs are going kind of with the bone side towards the fire. That's how we like to cook them. If we were to flip them the other way, uh, they would cook kind of similar. The bones just wouldn't like kind of pull out that much. Uh, here we got pork belly. Um, these we buy at HEB, as you can tell by the sticker. We use it uh, every single day here in the restaurant. Sliced belly, which we season up really simply. Uh, we use our brisket rub. Saturdays, we like to serve burnt ends. Yeah, well, when you hold these like in the warmer, do you hold them in like the, like the simple syrup that you cook them in? Or do you like take them out and then dump them back in? So we just, we just hold them in the sit in the same syrup that they sit in this will give them that candy taste it's got one kind of bigger muscle here and then it has this like weird flappy thing here as well we're gonna trim off the flap and try to maintain this muscle as much as we can just keep it intact as much as possible this is a kind of a scrap meat piece and this is our main muscle piece. From here, I'm just gonna clean it up. The scraps become our barbacoa. So we will season them similarly and smoke them similarly and confit them similarly. Uh, but the difference is that we are gonna take these cheeks to, so this is the finished trimmed cheek, but that's pretty much it. That's kind of what we're looking for right there. Trim them, season them, smoke them, and then we put them in a B-fat confit, all of our fat we trim off of our briskets, gets ground and then cooked on the stove or in the oven until all the moisture is gone and all we're left with is liquid B-fat. We strain that out and then we just, after these are smoked for about four hours, the crust is set and you'll see the B-fat confit out here today. We'll put them in there and cook them nice and low and slow on the smoker uh, until they're tender. And then we just pull them out and check them for tenderness and then we just slice them like a brisket. That's all connective tissue and uh, like collagen in there. And that's what makes a fatty brisket or a beef rib so tender because this is all collagen that will break down and turn into gelatin. And I think this is probably the most collagen rich cut on the entire cow. Yeah, brown syrup. I'm not doing a ton of them. I'm just going to kind of. Gives it that nice candy right, taste right people love. Just do it. Like that. When we're loading the pit with cheeks and barbacoa, we'll usually put the barbacoa like right next to the fire, like right up front, and almost use that as like a blocking log, because uh, it's going to diffuse some of the heat kind of going directly at our cheeks. And there's a bit of debate on if you should take this whole thing out or not. I know a lot of people, Franklin in his master class says he likes to leave some of it on and just kind of shave it down, saying it helps support the fatty end and all that. I don't buy it. I haven't seen any. I've tried it both, both ways. And you can see I took off a lot. Uh, and I know that's kind of scary when you're doing it at home because it's like, hey man, I'm, you know, I'm just doing this for my family. I'm not you know, trying to impress, well, you know, you, you want to impress people, but... <laughs> You also don't need this much scrap at home if you don't have like a grinder or if you're not making sausage. Like five essential cuts that we're looking for when we're trimming a brisket. The first is gonna be this kind of big thing on the back and then the back and then trimming the trimming the bottom. So that's one. Two is gonna be taking down the mohawk. Three is gonna be essentially trimming this stuff up. And then four is going to be this side along with that, and then five is gonna be trimming this side. Oh, oh. Just grinding up these scraps for bergs. The way that we do them is we cook them kind of straight for three hours, sauce them, let that sauce kind of cook on for about 15 to 30 minutes, and then we're gonna wrap them for the last like 
30, 45 minutes until they finish up. Pork, and then, I don't know if you saw that little, that big fat cap that was on the bottom. Yeah. That's what we used to add fat as well. So oh. it's about an 80, 20 blend more or less. We use uh, eight pounds of beef and eight pounds of pork to about four pounds of fat. Nice looking boys. How are we tamping? A little high, but. Like 130 too high or like 130? 130, 130, 130. That's good, that's good. That's pretty quick. Nice wean. <laughs> Telling if the brisket is done, not by, you know, picking, trying to feel through layers of paper, not by temping it, but really feeling the tenderness of the meat. And you can feel just directly right under to see how done it is. And then if it's not, you know, just put it back in. Uh, and if it is done, you can take it out. This stuff doesn't get hot, right? So you can just move this around anywhere you want. Um, so that's nice. And it doesn't get too hot like that. Uh, and then like we talked about when we were carving, so we're going to cut this in half, take a few slices off of it, take a few slices off of this side, then we can put those cut sides back together and then just form the foil kind of around that new shape. Do you ever just drink the syrup? No. <laughs> Do you ever put it on pancakes? Uh, no, I've never tried it. I do like to throw it on top of the ribs sometimes. It's already been rested. If you guys want to grab uh, a glove, uh, you guys can kind of feel it. So that way you can kind of see what a finished brisket feels like. That cut in like towards me because I like to hold this back part like with my hand. Because if I go the other way, this part is likely to shred up. It cooked really fast yesterday because it was kind of hot. It was kind of hot yesterday. This is the foil boat, yeah. You guys can see. Uh, so we, we'll have, uh, Still pretty moist. This, like this is a hard brand brisket, so that's why it's gonna look pretty good. Two hundred seventy-five, three hundred degrees. These are center cut chops. We just seasoned them. Super simple. I think they've been holding in there probably about an hour. But the the hold really isn't that important. Um, it's just hitting that temperature that's important here in this. I don't know what it is I, about pork chops, but they always tend to come out like this. Doing this These are the ones years. that we cook. Don't hit a bone, man. <laughs> don't, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, it, it gets... It gets a little tricky going to get towards the end, but... What's Can you give us a little cutting board slap? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Raising 55 prime brisket, you know, it's still pretty juicy still. It's just cooked a little differently. It's not going to be as crunchy as that heart brand brisket that we cooked, but it's still pretty nice. And you pick it up and you want to squish it, don't do it. <laughs> I'm just gonna cut these just like the brisket. <laughs> looks a lot like, I mean, it looks like a brisket, kinda. Right? Good gravy. Here with Joel Garcia, a uh, good buddy of mine from way back. Teddy's Barbecue, West Go, Texas, South Texas, down here in the valley. Me and Brad came down here to do a class with these guys, uh, see the new setup, check out the pits, teach some of uh, the good people of South Texas how we do some old school and some new school barbecue. How was the day, man? Uh, I think it went great, man. I think uh, we kind of went through like some old school methods, some new school methods. You know, we made, made a bunch of cheeseburgers, so that was yeah. cool. <laughs> so I think, I think it went well. I think our participants learned a lot. So yeah. everybody went home happy. It was a great day. So we yeah. came down to your class. Now you got to come up for ours. Now, yeah. So, all right. Yeah, that sounds awesome. All right, man. Well, thanks for having us, dude. I appreciate yeah. it. It was a great time, buddy. Thanks, thanks again, as always. Thank you.